All right. So you started this podcast completely on your own or with a friend, right? Or was it with a friend at first? How did that yeah. Happen? I mean, the, okay. the person that had initially come and approached me about the podcast was someone I had met through the industry. And then I asked um, a roommate to join me and make this with me. Right. And so like, how did you come up with the concept? Did you think to yourself, okay, we need something about like female sex in the market. We need something, or was it just a natural thing for you? I think like, it's crazy. Cause I had always been around like large groups of women being playing soccer my entire life and then playing d1 in school i would like see these amazing athletic women and there was always a divide in the locker room between like the girls that would love to talk about dating and sex and not just sex but just like feelings and relationship stuff and then the other women like respectfully that didn't openly talk about it whenever i would be one-on-one -on -one with them like they wanted to i think they just didn't know how to and so i always felt that like oh my gosh like these women want to talk about this stuff they love talking about sex but like, they're not probably because of how they were raised or whatever it was, or like societal standards. So I think that that was like something that I'd always recognized and I've always been a creator. So then once I graduated college, I recognized like there's the Howard Stern, but like, where is that for women? And so I think that that kind of definitely was the motivating factor between like seeing an open space in the market and especially being a millennial, I was like, oh my God, no one's doing this. Now, listen, I didn't know in the very beginning how big it was going to get and like all the themes of female empowerment underneath it that slowly came. Mm -hmm. That was like unintentional at first. I will not take credit. Like we started speaking and then it kind of started to formulate and as the audience got bigger, then I felt more of a responsibility to like, okay, hone in on like, what is the purpose of the show? Right. And what's so interesting about your specific podcast and, view and listeners are- men listen too because they want to know what you're telling the girls it's so interesting because like the beginning the men were like oh my god this is like the secret code like we just have to listen and we'll know i think as this show has progressed it's definitely been interesting to see the men that stick along i think like find them ladies because they are the ones you want to marry because now as the show has shifted to more heavy topics the men that have stayed are the ones that are not afraid to be vulnerable, that are not afraid to talk about mental health. And that, that is a husband material right there. <laughs> it really is. Um, fast forward now, I'm like proud of you. I don't even know you. And I'm like, I am just so proud to see your success. You just signed an exclusive deal with Spotify, reportedly worth $60 million, which is like a mouthful to say. What, when you hear that, like, what is that like for you? Insane. Um, I remember like living on unemployment checks in my little Lower East Side apartment in New York and like thinking Call Her Daddy was going to be a YouTube show. So to be sitting here now and to have signed a deal with Spotify, um, it's, I, it still hasn't hit me. Like people keep asking me like, how do you feel? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm so happy. I'm so, I feel so blessed, but it's also like, yes, I'm sure like my bank account will change, but like, I still feel like the same person. So it's just like, I don't, it's weird. It's definitely weird. Yes. yes. Yeah. What I think is so cool is you talked a lot about dating in your early days of the podcast, dating guys that had a lot of money, were professional athletes, musicians, and like, you are now the, you are now the daddy. You are like it. What is that like for you? Like taking on this role now of, it's, am I making sense? No. Oh, you're making the most sense. It is a little bit of like a ha ha F you moment because I remember one of my exes looked at me. I will never forget this. And I, he looks at me dead in the eyes and he was like, I don't understand how Tom Brady is married to Giselle. And I was like, why? And he was like, because she makes more money than him. And in that moment, I was like, you, um, we are done. And that is a perfect example of why this could never work. But it was so interesting to see someone of like such power and like playing this big sport and everyone looks up to this person. And I'm like, wait, these are his like morals. And this is his view on the world. Like, yeah. oh, buddy boy, one day I will also be that stature. So I think it was like motivating, I think, to meet men and to look at it like I was just like more of a prize. And then now to be able to be like, no, this is who I am and this is what I've built and I deserve a seat at this table. It is a pretty amazing feeling. I will not lie. 
I, I love it for you. I love listening to you. I love the, the moment of sitting at that table, having that power. It's just, it's so like inspiring. Um, so a lot of people that I talked to before I was chatting with you that listened to your podcast were like, ask her if she has any boundaries about the sex stuff. Like, is there anything she doesn't want to talk about or something off the table? Um, I definitely, it's funny because in the very, very beginning, I didn't want to talk about like my losing my virginity. Cause I knew that my mom would be able to pinpoint exactly who it was. And <laughs> my entire life, all she said is, I just hope you didn't lose it to him. And I did. So I was like, oh my God, I don't want my mom to know, which I still haven't even talked about on the show. So there you go. <laughs> um, but after that, I had no boundaries, I think because of how supportive my family was and how open they've known that I was going to do something like this. They didn't think it was going to be like a comedy sex podcast. Yeah. but they know who I am. So I'm fortunate that my family was super supportive with regard to boundaries. I think when I was dating around, it was so fun because it was part of the dating game. Like I remember it would be interesting. There's two different types of guys. One guy I dated that was acting like he wasn't into it. And he was like in the NHL and he was like, I can't have my teammates listening to this. And then he would call me playing it on the speaker in the locker room and all the guys would be listening to it. And he would be like getting off to it. And I'm like, so you pretend to hate it. <laughs> but you love it. And so, th so that was a boundary where I knew where to push now being in a relationship. It's different in terms of, it took a minute because I started my relationship on the internet being like, Oh my God, I met this man on zoom and he's so hot and he's out and all the time. And then I was like, Oh wait, I actually have feelings for this person. And now right. I'm you didn't know where it exactly. was going to leave. So now I think he's really, he's in the entertainment industry himself. And I think he understands. And so I think all he asks of me is just to give him a heads up when I'm going to talk about something, um, so that he can prepare himself mentally. This is, I'm thinking this is because you guys are thinking one day you will expose sexy zoom man. Oh, I mean, it's hard because like I've done the public relationship before. And I look back on that. And like, I've always even said on like my show, like, I feel like you shouldn't even post your significant other, unless you're like, all right, I've got a ring and we're married and this is forever. Like, I just feel like it's so awkward when you have to like awkwardly like delete or archive like these photos. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like I also like to have, that's one thing I have for myself for privacy. And I know some people may know who he is, but for the most part, nobody knows. And I kind of love that. You have to keep something private. You've been so open. And this has been three years. Like, holy shit, your life has exploded I know. in the best way possible. But like, you know, you could at least keep that to, you know, yourself. That's that's my thought. I know. I'm like, I think I'm going to try to keep that as private as I can for as long as I can. I get it. I do. Um, you've interviewed already some incredible women. Miley Cyrus, just recently Chelsea Handler, which I loved that interview. Um what is it like sitting down with these like powerful women that just three years ago you were in like the nosebleeds of Chelsea's show? It's shocking. And I still like, I I'm so hard on myself in post editing. And I'm like, why didn't I ask that? And I'm like, because Alex, you were shaking and you were so excited to be like <laughs> Chelsea Handler sitting on my couch. And I'm like, Hey, Chelsea, like, what's up? Like, yeah. no. And so I just think it's definitely, I have to ground myself and center myself before I meet with these people. But I always try to keep in mind, like there's going to be something relatable about this person. Just like when I meet some people and they're like, oh my God, Alex. And they don't think I'm relatable. Like I am. And so I keep that. And I remember that like, we are all just trying to live our lives. And like, it's exciting though. I feel honored to have the platform to be able to be the one, the voice that's asking these women, these questions, because it's, it's a lot of responsibility and I want to do right by my listeners. And I want to give the most entertaining interview as I also am trying to learn how to even interview. Cause I've never done that before until last year. So you just learned, I never interviewed anyone before I started doing yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know I'm a good talker. All I'm good at is talking. So then right. I just, you know, uh, <laughs> same. Um, all right. So would you consider a full-time co-host again, or is this just you're a hundred percent? This is your show now. This is, yeah, no co-host. It's just too complicated. I've learned it the, the hard way. Yeah. Um, and it's it's better this way. And I feel creatively way, I have way more autonomy now over of my creative and I can make executive decisions and being my own boss has helped me really to be like, 
I now can control where this ship is moving. And this Spotify deal, I truly believe like I needed to be in control in order for this to ever happen or it may never have happened. So I think like no co-host. I agree. <laughs> um, all right. You said your dream guest is Taylor Swift, which I'm so on board for. Yes. Who else would you want besides Taylor? Um, that's an interesting question. I think, I think Billie Eilish would be a really interesting conversation. Um, I feel like she's lived many lives already and she's still so young. And so I think that her perspective on life would be really interesting to sit down and chat. Um, I also, I would love Cardi B because she's Cardi B. Um, Megan the Stallion would also be unbelievable. Like there's just so many people that I feel like if I could just get in a room with them, we would have such unbelievable conversations. So those would probably be like my top three. Also Sarah Jessica Parker, but like those are my top four. Um, Cardi B's wild. So get ready for she's a freaking wild. I would love it. I honestly would love it. <laughs> um, wait, I feel like we need you on a cameo of like the new Sex in the City reboot. I just told my agent that I was like, wait, I didn't realize that Sarah Jessica's character is now going to be having a podcast. Like Carrie Bradshaw is coming back having a podcast. We need to get in there. Um, that would be iconic. Yeah. I can so see it. And I think it's, we have to hit up SJP. Um, so when everything went down and I don't really want to talk about this that much because yeah. it's in the past, but I feel like for the viewers, you know, when everything went down with the podcast, with Sophia, everything coming apart, like, how did you, how did you handle that? Like mentally, how did you handle that? Um, you know, you said something recently about feeling guilty, like, but you don't feel guilty. And I thought yeah. to myself, well, why does she feel guilty? But then I realized all everything you went through. So how did you get through that time? And how does it feel today when you look back on that time? It was a really difficult time. And I've talked to my mom about this and I've talked to my therapist about this, but like to have your career explode over drama is a very strange feeling because that drama and then taking over as the single father, like I now do numbers that she and I never did. And I'm laughing because you said single father. <laughs> oh yeah, single father era. Like when I was like then taking over the show, like it is weird to be like, wow, like we never, like the show I remember like was hitting, like by the end we were hitting certain numbers. And then when I took it over, we were, I was like, we've never done these numbers. So it was weird to see my career explode because of that personally it was really hard because obviously the internet just keeps wanting more and more drama and you have to find a line of how much are you going to tell the public how much are you going to expose there was both sides trying to expose different things and I had to like morally draw a line of like I'm not going to say all of this and I'll just say this I think that now I look back and I just knew though and I think we both knew it was actually going to end. Like it, it, even though it happened to be over the negotiations, the two of us were not going to be in business much longer. There were a lot of things behind the scenes that were going mm. on. And so I think in a beautiful way, like it kind of worked out how it was supposed to. And I feel yeah. this deal, I really worked my ass off for so that entire year was just dedicated to my listeners to make sure that the quality didn't drop off, but only elevated. And so I take that with great pride. And I think that this Spotify deal really emulates the work that I put into it these past, this past year now. I love it. It certainly does, obviously. I mean, you're yeah. so successful, but I also love that you said you're still editing. Oh, I'm still editing. And it's funny because Spotify was like, Alex, like we're going to get you editors. And I've met with some and I have the utmost respect for them. But then I was like, just kidding. I don't need an editor. Um, because I think I just realized like why the show became so successful. One of the factors was the way that I edit. And I think that nobody knows that, like, obviously when you're listening, you don't notice, but the shit that you don't hear that I edit out, it's like, it makes it so fast and it's way more, um, consumable for the millennial and Gen Z. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like meeting with editors and I'm like, no, I'm just going to keep doing it, which is fine. Editing is an art. Like people don't understand that if you don't do it, it's an art, yeah. you know, I spend and more time editing the show than I do prepping or interviewing or recording. Yeah. 
Um, okay, Logan Paul called you the one icon of this generation who should be giving sex advice to young women and men. <laughs> Thank you, Logan. Okay, so where do you draw your inspiration? Because like we all have sex, we all, you know, but like you're one person, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're now in a relationship. Yeah. So where do you continue to draw this inspiration? I'm a very um, like outgoing person. I'm a Leo and I've always my entire life, like everything I do in my life, I need to be the best at it. And it's like my weakness and my, like my strength, but it's, I think in the bedroom, I've always just really been someone that's like selfish in a way and then I think by being selfish I also am then giving because selfishly I also want to be like oh and look what I can do so it's not just about receiving it's also giving and I feel like that has helped me at the beginning of the inception of Caller Daddy the Gluck Gluck 9000 is still what it is to this day I'm so happy I could give that um to the world but yeah I think it's like the inspiration is more so just like being more in tune with what I'm feeling. I feel like when you try to be like someone or do something, that's when it goes wrong. Like being yourself and like going from like gut instinct of like, what am I feeling? Am I horny? If you're not in the mood, why are you forcing it? Like those things I think have helped me just like, I do it in life of just like going off my gut and then also in sex life. And do you think therapy has helped you with this actually? It's literally changed my life. <laughs> I definitely, it was interesting. I had like a weird period where like once I started the show, I had like anxiety when it came to sex right. and I never experienced it. And I think it was because for the first time I would be meeting with guys that at times would admittedly tell me they were just on the date. I had a guy literally look at me on a first date and say, my friends told me if it's the last thing you do, you have to f her. And I was like, nice to meet you. <laughs> So it like became really stress inducing, not knowing if someone was just there to like find out what the gluck gluck was like. Right. Um, but as time has gone on, I've now like, I've worked on that in therapy and I don't have anxiety about that anymore. But in the beginning, I, I won't lie. It was really stress inducing. I don't blame you, of course. And hopefully your boyfriend now makes you feel like. Oh yes. He's amazing. And I, yeah, we are really happy. And I think having him be in the entertainment industry and from LA, like he gets it. And he's mm -hmm. actually, he's always like, can you turn call her daddy Alex off for a second? Like let's we're in the house, there's no cameras. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like he loves the side of me that isn't like fully like the wild dominant woman. And I think that is like kind of cool to have someone that just accepts me that like some days I just want to lay on the couch in my sweatpants, no makeup on and like be myself and not have to like be glammed. I love that. I love that for you. Um, okay. F like what's the plan with call her daddy? Because you've now, you're now about to build an empire here. So what is your dream for this brand? I think the dream is I'm really trying to like it's interesting. I don't want to say like right my wrongs this year, but like I I've said that I want to do an, a segment about really reflecting back on the original call her daddy days. I think in the beginning it was so beautifully salacious and it was really out there and it was really pushing boundaries. And I stand by that period of time in my life and what I was saying. However, I've changed, like I've grown, I've gotten into therapy. I'm in such a different relationship now with a partner that like I could have never been giving this type of advice. So I think for me creatively, it's leaning into being the genuine side of myself, but also kind of going back and talking about some things I may have said in the past that I don't fully agree with, or maybe I still do agree with. Like I want to kind of go back and listen literally to old episodes with everyone and be like, why the did I say that? Or, oh wait, I still agree with that. Um, and then I think just as a whole for the brand, I really want to let everyone know and continue to put forth content that is empowering women. I understand in the beginning, it was so wild, so crazy. Everyone was like, is this it female empowerment? Like what's going on? And the true listeners did know that, but I think people from the outside looking in, it's like, oh, those girls are just talking about sex. I think so it's kind of the new journey is to rebuild part of the brand right. so that everyone can be more inclined to, hey, I'm going to listen. Like maybe I'll give it a try and really understand that there are some episodes that are so 
opposite what you probably think of the brand call her daddy. Totally. I totally agree. I feel like I've grown with your podcast. Like <laughs> That's what so many people have said. They're like, I feel like we're growing up. And it was like, how many more times can you hear me talking about finessing a boy? Like I can do it with my eyes closed now. Now let's figure out how to manage like a healthy adult relationship. Mm-hmm. Like that to me is more enticing and appealing right now. Like, and that's genuine to me. I listened to you when I was single and then I'm in a relationship. Now I listen to you and I'm, we're like, so yes. I understand how people feel that way. Um, and women, what people don't get is women talking about sex it, period is empowering because we're not taught to talk about sex. It's been so labeled as taboo and it's such a man topic and it's like even just the whole concept of like self-love and like it's like why can we talk about men just like going to bang one out and like women if it's like you own a toy what's going on this is so weird it's like why and even like between friends some friends haven't felt comfortable to like bridge that topic but it's just because of what society has taught us so I think that is one thing I'm so happy that my show has began to normalize that type of conversation because it's so important well, thank you for doing the Lord's work, Alex. You are. I'm trying. <laughs> you are the true father. And um, I really appreciate you taking this time out. I want to see Brittany on your podcast once she's free. She is without a doubt. Yes, she's like number one right next to Taylor Swift. And I obviously knowing just everything legally going on, like I'm just waiting in the wings and I'm being patient and I'm being respectful. But don't worry, she's absolutely on my list. If not, I Love. Good luck with everything. I'm, I'll be like rooting for you. You're incredible. And I'm just so happy to see you rise. It's so refreshing. Thank you so much for having me. Great question. Of course. Love it.